Hey there, everybody. Wes back again with another tech video. Walking around the shop right now. I'm getting ready to ride to Springfield, Missouri for the MOA rally. Gonna be leaving next weekend to go. I gotta get there early to set up and get everything ready for all you folks that are coming. And uh, that means it's time to get my bike in shape and do all the things that I need to do, which for me is tires and an oil change. And we're gonna do the final drive oil too. <laughs> a lot of people rely on there being tires available at the rally. There's always a DIY area where you can work on your own bike if you do an oil change when you're there. But I would rather not have to mess with any of that stuff. Looking at my tires, going with George's advice, I probably got enough meat on the tires to go to Missouri and back. But that's if I do all highway and I don't do anything fun and I don't follow that interesting looking road that looks like it's gonna be fun or take any side trips or any detours, I can probably get there and get back and not be showing cord. So it's smarter for me, in my opinion, to go ahead and put the new tires on before I go so that I've got full length tires, uh, or full life tires. And while I'm in there, I'm early for an oil change, but is it gonna kill me? No, it's a little additional expense. Is that a bad thing, George? Additional expense is a bad thing, <laughs> Changing the oil never hurts. So we're just going to do that and get it out of the way. Um, George has a nice big tire machine. I'll show you that in a second. And uh, we'll watch how he balances tires because he's very good at it. But uh, it's just a good way to prep for the rally to make sure that you're not stranded on the side of the road due to a maintenance issue. Uh, plus, yesterday when I was inspecting my bike and uh, doing a little bit of work on it, I saw a nail in the rear tire and I was lucky to make it back to the shop today. Uh, I didn't say anything about it, so I wouldn't jinx it. But now that I'm here, I can talk about it. So I'm going to be putting on a set of Dunlop Mutants that I've had waiting for me for a while. Very excited about these new Mutants and uh, looking forward to trying them out. So uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll watch the process as we go. So first step in an oil change, of course, is getting the bash plate off. And uh, I always like to look at my rock collection. Not too much there take that out to the parking lot and dump it there's a one of our customers has a euro motorcycle some of the rubber grommets on here are a little chewed up i don't know if i'm gonna mess with them are those replaceable george sure those little grommets i don't know if i have them but yeah well i can replace them next time and we'll get going on draining that oil this is always my favorite part of any oil change trying to get the drain plug out without making a giant mess are getting oil all over my hands. We'll see how I do. Here we go. Almost there. Oh, dropped it right in the oil. Uh, it'll clean up. Don't forget to change your crush washers. I've never done anything like that before. Oh, I got it. Oh. <laughs> this is how hold you that, do it without it. burning your finger. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'll hold it. Look at that. Yeah, okay. Now it's nice and clean. Boink. Always take a look at your drain plug, especially if it's magnetic, to see if there's any chunks on it. A little bit of shiny matter isn't a bad thing, but if you see chunks on there, you wanna get that checked out by a certified mechanic. All right, since the oil filter is on the side of the engine, taking it off leaves a big mess here on the exhaust pipe and the oxygen sensor. So make sure you clean that off, otherwise you get the smell of burning oil and nobody really likes that. This is a standard BMW oil filter. And normally, if the filter went on vertically, I would fill it with oil before installing it. But since this one goes on sideways, filling it with oil would just dump oil all over the ground. So I'm gonna dip it just to get the gasket wet. See the gasket there? And then I'm going to spin it on by hand, gently. And once I can't turn it by hand anymore, I'm gonna use the torque wrench to set it to the proper setting. So a lot of times you can just do, you know, a half turn extra, three quarter turn extra. But since BMW has a torque specification for it, I'm gonna do that. Okay, I've got the old oil drained. I got a new filter on. I got a, the drain plug is in and torqued. The bash plate is back on. Now I'm gonna fill it four liters, goes into this hole uses this tool that comes with the bike to open that cap. There is a rubber O-ring in there that you need to check. 
you just want to check and make sure it's not split, chewed, whoops, dropped under the lift. Awkward. As I was saying, little rubber O-ring, you want to make sure it's not split, cracked, torn, and if you drop it on the floor under the lift, you want to make sure it's clean before you put it back in. And it just tucks right down here in this hole, all the way to the bottom, and then the cap goes on over it. Finger tight, and then give it a twist with the tool. You don't need to try to force it in to bottom it out. It just needs to be nice and snug. Next, we're gonna start the bike, make sure that the oil light goes out, then we'll do the final drive in the tires. So I'm about to pull this to drain the final drive. You notice I've already taken out the fill plug. Always take the fill plug out first, and then we're gonna take this out. And I've got a graduated cylinder here because I wanna see how much comes out. I don't need to do this every time, but I like to. It's supposed to have 180 out and 180 in, but I like to be sure. Check that gap for gunk. So there's the drain plug, and there's a couple important things to note about the drain plug for the final drive. And this is a 2015. This is gonna to apply to all of the water-cooled 1200 GSs and RTs and et cetera, et cetera, that have a shaft final drive. So it does not have a crush washer. It has an O-ring but you see it has a lip on it that looks like a crush washer. So it's really important to torque this to spec because if you over torque it, you're gonna bend this lip and then when you try to put it in, it'll cut or deform the O-ring and then your final drive is gonna leak out of the drain hole and that would be bad. So make sure that you use a torque wrench on this, especially on this drain plug for your final drive. Looks like it is just barely under 180. That's probably accurate. Now we're gonna fill it with the appropriate oil, SAFXO, 75W90, 180 milliliters. All right, we've got our beauty bottle here. We're gonna fill it with 180 milliliters of oil. Ding! And then that goes in the final drive. Okay, with the oil, engine oil and the filter and the final drive done. Now it's time to do the tires, which is kind of the least fun part. Taking the wheels on and off is just really not a lot of fun, but you got to do it. And that's what we're going to do. So I was able to find the nail that I thought was in my back tire. We're going to pull it out and see if it was uh, all the way through to puncture. Currently not leaking. Ah. You got a needle nose, see if we can get a, a grip on it. Agrippa. Ah, looky there. It's small. It might not have gone all the way through, but. I didn't hear anything. Well, I'm putting new tires on it anyways, but that's why you check your tires, folks. What do you, what do you figure that is? Piece of a nail or something? Piece of a nail, yeah. So to get the front wheel off, you had to take the calipers off. Taking the calipers off is a great opportunity to check your brake pads. So let's wiggle that bad boy. Ooh. Undo these first. Take a look at those. Brake pads look okay. Mm -hmm. You agree? I agree. I concur. You concur. So a couple of things to note. George does this a lot, tires, and he puts a little arrow on to note which way is the direction of travel so he doesn't have to think or do anything other than match up the arrow on the tire with the arrow on the disc. And most BMWs somewhere will have an arrow. On the rim. On the rim and sometimes on the hub. But... So here's the, that's the tone, or they call it a tone ring for the ABS. The sensor watches those gaps. You can tell from this that this bike has the tire pressure monitor system in it. So that affects how you take the tires off. And we're gonna just watch George do that. Before I do anything, even though this is a 16 and not a 17, and the problem was with 17s, I always check spoke tension. It's like music. And what are you checking just to make sure they all sound roughly the same? Just make sure they ring. You don't gotcha. want to hear, that would mean it's loose. Gotcha. You could tell me what that is. 
Da -na -na -na. I think it's a C. It might be. Oh, you squeeze it down and it gets all the air out? Yep. So this is how you spend most of your days, huh? Just draining air. Yep. <laughs> is this machine specially meant for motorcycle tires, wheels, or is it? A, it's been modified. A car machine that's been modified. Yeah, it's a car machine. But the only difference is these blocks. Oh, okay. If it was a car machine, or no, what it came with was an old style car machine. These were big steel claw Gotcha. Things. And we've done car tires on this before. Yeah, you can do car tires on this. You can do motorcycle tires on car machines if you don't mind big giant gouges all over your rim. Yeah, I've seen that happen. It's kind of okay. sad. It's the crusher to break the bead. And what's, what are you spraying in there? Just the soapy water. They uh, make many a commercially available lubricant for this, but... Soapy water does just fine. I own BMW motorcycle. <laughs> you can apply whatever you want. Once you get through the first side, hang on until the compressor shuts off because I want to ask you a question. Approximately 10 hours later. So let me ask you a couple questions about the tire pressure monitor because mm -hmm. you're about to get the bottom of the tire off mm -hmm. over the top of the wheel. How do you make sure you don't damage the, the tire pressure monitor? By having it in that position. You notice that's where it was when I did the other bead too. Yes. And even though it popped off with the valve here, I continued to rotate it around. Yeah. So then I make sure that I pull the tire. If you come around to this side, you can see that it's there. So I've pulled it up instead of letting it stay like that. Right. You have to pull it up and above. That way you won't snap it off because it will snap, snap off. right off. Tire machines are have a lot of torque. You will yeah. not be able to stop this once it's spinning. And this little bolt is not going to stand in its way either. So spin it around so we can see the, the well, thing Well, I will, again. because when I put the new tire on... You want it in the same spot. I, again, start right about there. Yeah. So, I don't know. You, you might not know this, but this is an aftermarket one because they failed. The bike is seven years old. And we just got those. Did Are those the ones you got off eBay? Uh, I don't remember where I got them, but yeah, somewhere. And then we needed a tool to wake them up. And then we used the GS911 to uh, key them to the computer in the bike. And they work just fine. So we gotta find the directional arrow. Do manufacturers put a, a dot on for the heavy spot anymore? Some do, some don't. I'm guessing here you would wanna put that opposite the tire pressure monitor. Well, they put a dot that's supposed to go with the valve stem, so that's what I always do. Oh, okay. It's dot with the valve stem. So it's a little more of a light spot than a heavy spot. Yeah, and in your case, you've got one there, you've got one there. There's one there. There's another paint, paint dot there. Nice. A nice sticker in the way of the bead. You know, <laughs> why I ought to, in my day. I could have bought this tire for a nickel. <laughs> I don't like things. People don't pay attention to what they're doing. Won't put anything on the beat. What about that sticker? That's not a sticker. I mean, what it, it might be a sticker, but that's embedded into the rubber. Oh, okay. At the point of manufacture, that's your... Important information. If there's a recall, that's the number gotcha. that you're looking for. That won't be taken off when you curb check. There's also one on the inside too. Nice. How convenient. 
Yeah, I'm gonna put that one there. We'll find out when we'll you try to out, yeah. when you try to balance it. So and then you'll do kind of the opposite, and you'll push manually push that down over the tire pressure monitor. No, ideally that it'll stay here until the end. Gotcha. Sometimes they don't want to. Climb. Well, as sidewalls get stiffer, this always gets a little more difficult. Luckily, it's warm out, so it's not quite as hard as I've seen some of them go. There we go. ta -da. Now, this is the fun part. We have to set the bead, so we're going to put a lot of air into it all at once. And this always, you got to wait for the two pangs. And maybe the compressor will turn back on. We'll see. Headphone alert. That gets me every time. I think that was the bottom bead because I can still see. There it is. 36 in the front. 38. 38 in the front. She's butchered. So next we got to balance it. So the first thing George is going to do is scrape off the old, well, once he gets it set up, he's going to scrape off the old weights. Now I'm cheap. I'm going to see if it balances with them. Oh, that's a good idea. And with the tire pressure monitor in there, these wheels may take more weight than you'd think they would. That's why there's, what, 8, 9, 10, 11 blocks on there right now? Yeah. And because it has a tire pressure monitor, they almost always go back completely opposite the sensor so there's no point in taking them all off just take a few off and see take what happens a few off, see what happens put a few on wow that's, so, where, it's that's where environmentalism crosses with cheap bastardism right it's almost like you've done this before once or twice now, if i wasn't holding the video camera phone i would be over there getting ready to take the other wheel off so that he could just seamlessly do this but and there we are and there we are so you just removed some of the weights and it's Remove some of the weights and there you are didn't didn't have to take those off and threw them away we'd just be putting them right back on again yeah so do you consider that more art or science i'd say it's science <laughs> and here's the the arrow on the hub i knew there'd be one. Oh yeah look at that little arrow right there on the hub all right so now we're going to put that wheel back on the bike and then we'll do the rear i'm not going to make you watch that because it's the same as the front only different so there's the new front dunlop mutant installed ready to go to missouri now we're going to do the rear so that's where you check your oil you can see it's just above the circle top of the circle so that means it might be just a little too full but it's not too too full because i can still see a gap so i'll just keep an eye on that it means i got pretty pretty close to the right amount of oil in there so we're going to put the rear wheel on and while the wheel is off also check the brake pads and they look good there you can see them pretty good it look good and just give it an overall once over to make sure this isn't leaking it's a little dirty there because i spilled some oil put the rear wheel on i thought i detected the clutch slipping a little bit so i'm gonna have george take it for a test ride and we'll be careful with the tires and there's some things you shouldn't show customers like that what's that say it says made in france oh no made in france oh <laughs> that's an inside joke people oh Burn it, burn it. What part of Buffalo is in France? So last thing is a test ride. I've asked George to take it for a test ride because I think the clutch might be slipping. He's going to decide for sure. Because couple of smoky, big smoky wheelie burnouts will. Uh, there you go. You damn tall people. <laughs> I didn't pull it over next to your block. I'm sorry. Well, if you had an adventure with a full tank of gas, I'm too short to break it over yeah have fun i will don't forget those are new tires <laughs>